What's up, everybody? It's your boy Walking Mondu. You are watching Wrench Wrench Garage. This is Plasti Gauge here, and basically, what this does is allows you to determine the oil clearances between your journals and your journal bearings, and you can also use it to determine the oil clearance on your piston rods as well. Look, man, it's 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 not the best. But if you don't have anything, and if you're just like a simple shop like mine that just likes to throw in together engines, this will get you in the ballpark. And nine times out of ten, if they're in the ballpark, you know you're actually going to be pretty good when it comes to oil clearances. So there's no need to worry. I got my ARP bolts and studs. They came in the mail, so thank goodness. We're going to lay our, our bearings in on both sides. And uh, we're going to throw the crank in there, and we are going to go ahead and bolt everything down. And we are going to go ahead and determine where we are when it comes to oil clearance on the uh, on the crank it's just a little thin green piece of material and basically you just take a little I mean just a little tiny bit of it you break a little piece off like that and then you lay it across the journal like that and you do it for each journal that's going to get a cap and once you lay those all on you put the caps on you bolt everything down to the correct torque spec then you remove everything and then you measure how much squish that has. So as you can see the first one there, right there, there's the other one hanging out there, but that's the other one there, and then that's another one there, and the last one on the very back, right there. Alright. Now that we have our journals in place, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're open this thing up. and. Cool. I'm gonna go ahead and read through these instructions because normally I'm a man and uh, and men don't read instructions, but uh, uh, this guy I'm gonna read this instruction. So give me a second. Alright guys, just wanted to include that you have to understand that these things are different sizes. I wanted to make sure because when I read the paperwork, which it clearly says these things are two different sizes, so I made sure that I have the, the sizes separated, what goes where, and then the right amount of stuff, and this, these nuts are for the engine, uh, for the windage tray, and those bolts are for the side. So I made sure I had enough, I made sure everything was here, I made sure nothing was damaged, because it actually says to do that and uh, I'm gonna make sure I do this correctly slowly and do this 100% right also guys since you're gonna be on a time lapse and you probably won't see it what I'm gonna be doing is uh, I'm gonna be putting a little bit of this assembly lube on all of the threads here these are only going in hand tight you do not tighten these down with any it, it has a place where you can use an Allen right at the top there I don't know if you can just go ahead and put these things in hand tight we're going to use a little bit of this fastener uh, assembly lubricant here and that's what we're going to put it in there and then you're going to put a little bit under the uh, head of the nut and a little bit on the threads. So that's what I'm going to be doing as I'm putting this in. So I just wanted to show you uh, what I'm going to be doing since it's going to be time lapse and going pretty quick. So I just wanted to show you. I'm also going to put a little bit of assembly lube on these guys too. Uh, but as I put them in I'm going to clean them, clean them dry because right now as you can see they're a little shiny. 
That's because they have uh, some sort of uh, oil or something on there to keep them from uh, getting a little bit of rust in the boxes and stuff. I'm gonna I'm gonna be using brake cleaner, and I, I might. Sometimes you can coat them things with a little bit of WD-40 and it don't hurt anything. But definitely for the threads itself, you want to keep those as dry and clean as possible. So I'm going to break clean these really good here and really good here. We're going to go ahead and start assembling with the fastener assembly lubricant. All right, guys. Well, I had to kind of go back and um, make sure all these uh, threads were cleaned out really good. Uh, I forgot to do that the first time, so I had to go back and do it again. I took the crank back out, cleaned it up again and dropped it back in there just to make sure everything was nice and clean i have my plastic gauge back on there now and now i'm going to go ahead and put the studs in and i'm going to go ahead and crank them down to uh, the specific foot pounds i'll go ahead and leave that right there you guys can pause screenshot whatever inner studs are going to be uh, 60 foot pounds outer studs are going to be 50 foot pounds and uh the side bolts are 20 foot pounds when this tray is going to be 28 foot pounds and this is the torque sequence here. guys I just wanted to take some time out of this video to say thanks to uh, these guys right here this is Osa tools um, they've been supporting me a while for you know just providing me with wrenches and you know just just kind of you know just completely just um, proving every step of the way that they like what I'm doing here and they like the channel they've been sending me stuff and the latest thing they've sent me that I'm gonna go ahead and unveil just for this video is their new digital torque wrench they actually hit me up on Instagram and said, hey, we got some new stuff. Is there anything you want to try? I said, well, you know, I have this Craftsman digital torque wrench and it's been okay. But, uh, you know, I'm getting ready to build an engine and uh, it would, what a great idea would be to compare your torque wrenches to somebody that's been tried and true like uh, Craftsman to see uh, what happens. Now, I'm not going to do a full review on any of these two uh, yet. Uh, maybe that's going to come in the future. Um, but for now, I am going to go ahead and use this digital torque wrench. I've used this Craftsman one. I was using it on the uh, Jaguar over there. Now I'm going to go ahead and use this one on the engine that I'm building. But as you can see here, first of all, it's a lovely finish on this thing. This thing is awesome. I like the fact that it comes with, with AA batteries instead of those round style because these are a lot easier to find. The etching on there, also tools etching, wonderful stuff. Um, this one does appear to be slightly longer than this one, which means um, more torque. If you got a torque wrench, you're going to probably need a lot of torque. And uh, it probably goes up to probably 250 foot pounds, I'm assuming, which is uh, plenty for what I need it for. Looks like a great piece of equipment. If you're gonna, I'm going to do this in about three passes. So I'm going to go 20, 40, and then 50, then 60, and uh, see where we end up uh, with this plastic gauge. Alright guys, I kind of just got to show you this. This is this thing is probably one of the most incredible tools I've ever used. I can't believe it, it, it took this long to freaking take it out the box and, uh, to, and to use it. But I mean, I'm telling you, all you have to do is once you put this thing on here, this thing will tell you. Just like that. I've never used the turquoise. I've always used like the cheap ones where they just click. Even the expensive Craftsman one I have. It's a digital torque wrench, but it's a digi-click. So even after you digitally set it, 
you still have to go to the clip. This right here, you just go and it tells you when you've hit. This thing is freaking awesome. This is probably now my new favorite tool. Okay guys, after gently, very gently prying this thing off, what we have is the remnants of the uh, plastic gauge, which is what we're looking for. Now, what you're gonna see is this little mark right there. And what you're gonna use is the actual wrapper that's, uh, that, that the plastic gauge came in. So what you're gonna see are those little numbers there. And you are going to line up whatever numbers those are with the plastic gauge marking right there and that will give you a roundabout number of your oil clearance it's going to be somewhere between 15 which looks like it matches up right there at 15 and about 10 which is plenty because as long as you're somewhere between 02 and 15 you should be all right and uh, i'm telling you that that my machine shop is just certified badass they are so just really right on the money very consistent it looks like i'd measured it all the way through but the fact of the matter is everything is just reading really close 15 thousandths range right in there right there 15 on all of them i mean am i am i crazy am i reading that wrong i mean come on look at that so it looks like everything is right right within spec if not it's right at the very edge of uh, the oil clearance for spec now this engine is going to be doing a lot of horsepower so i do kind of want it on the more uh, open side a little bit as far as uh, oil is concerned. So I do uh, I do appreciate that. So he this guy knows what he's doing. He's been doing this stuff. I don't know. If, I, I don't know. I don't know how old he is, and uh, it doesn't seem to ever age to me. But Chuck, thank you. If you're watching this, thank you so much, Chuck. You're doing a you're doing you do a hell of a job, man. I appreciate it. And uh, we're gonna clean the excess stuff off of the journals. And I'm going to go ahead and put the main caps back on. We're going to do a final torque since I am pretty happy with where the tolerances are. And uh, we'll go ahead and build this thing back out. But for right now, I'm tired. We're going to do all that stuff tomorrow. Hey, what's up, guys? It is the following evening in the shop. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and try to finish up uh, putting this bad boy together here. So I think for right now, uh, I'm going to go ahead and pull the crank back out again. Um, as you see, we did our little measurements with the plastic gauge to determine the oil uh, the, the oil clearances. So what I'm going to do is throw some music on and we're going to pull the crank right back out again. That way we can go ahead and get the journals nice and lubed. What I ended up getting is some of this stuff right here. This is the Lucas uh, assembly lube, high performance stuff. I've uh, been using that for a little while. Use it on, you know, my Toyota motors and I use it on the Jeep motors and it seems to be just fine. Um, just make sure that when you do an engine like this where you're gonna have a lot of horsepower and clearances change and things like that use a good brake and oil as well but what uh, what I'm going with right now is just uh, the assembly lube that I have I didn't I wasn't gonna do this at first until it was kind of brought to my attention uh, that it may just be easier to go ahead and install the cam uh, while I have access to put my fingers down there and help guide it and not beat up any of the cam bearings that are freshly put in there. Okay guys, so this is the camshaft that I'm using. This is a Brian Tooley Racing camshaft. This camshaft is a stage two, uh, made for the LS1, LS2, uh, basically Gen 3, Gen 4. So we're gonna be using this on the street, but however it is, it is, it is relatively aggressive. I think the uh, customer wanted something really, really aggressive, but um, I went as aggressive as I could to make it as streetable as possible as well. Uh, I, I went and I asked my machine shop, did some asking around and uh, see what everybody's using, what everybody's doing, just to kind of get a gauge on where where I kind of want to go with this. And I feel like uh, this 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 would probably be the one I'm doing here. We should still see anywhere between, you know, uh, 400 and 500 horsepower. It's not crazy, but he's going to be boosting it as well. So this should do just fine for when he's uh, running NA for right now. And then when he wants to step up the boost, uh, it, it, all of it can handle it. So that's the reason why we're building it the way we're building it. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm either going to flash on the screen uh, the specs of this thing, or I'm going to leave them down in the description below. So you can get the specs on this, uh, on, on this and, I'll, and I'll leave a link to the website where I place the order for this cam if you're interested in using this cam. So before I install the cam, in it is uh, some stuff in there that keeps it from, from rusting as, um, as it sits in the package. But uh, we're just going to clean some of that off. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and, uh, and I'm going to re-lube this thing 
with uh, this Lucas assembly lube. Basically, I'm just making sure that there's no trash on it, um, that nothing from inside the package stuck to the stuff that they use. I know some folks are probably looking at me like I'm crazy for like, ah, just go ahead and throw it in there. Ah, well, you know, no. What we're gonna start doing is we're gonna, I'm gonna start back here, and as I feed it in, I'm gonna lube as I go along, making sure not to miss anything. Okay guys, so this, that right there, that's the windage tray. I made some marks here, here, and here. And basically those are the ones, these holes aren't quite big enough for it to fit over the studs. So I'm gonna have to drill these out just a little bit to match all the rest of the holes. All the rest of the holes fit, uh, but these, uh, just they just don't. So what I'm gonna do is drill those out so they all fit. So they will all sit down on the studs. And not to mention, ARP was nice enough to provide some hold down nuts for this guy. Okay guys, uh, this is going to be the end of this video. Next time uh, I'm going to be gapping the rings and uh, hopefully I can get a little bit better explanation on how that actually works uh, a little bit more. But there's tons of videos out there for it guys and uh, you, if you have the internet, trust me, you can figure out how to gap some rings for a LS engine. Trust me, it's out there. Just find it and that's pretty much all I've been doing. But thanks you guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, greatly appreciate it. Don't forget. You can like, subscribe, and comment. Show me that you actually like what I'm doing here. So you can go and hit that little, that little thumbs up button. But uh, thanks again, guys. You guys keep wrenching. Wrench, trench out.